Okay, let's go. Let's spend a few minutes going over the web services for S3DB deployments. S3DB is a semantic data service, and you can read more about it at s3db.org or at wiki.s3db.org, where you get the documentation, you get instructions about loading. And if you type in the search box JSON, which is the theme of today's presentation. So in today's present presentation, we'll be describing how you can use the JavaScript object notation to interoperate with S3DB. Other formats are supported, such as XML and RDF, but we'll only talk about JSON today. So if you click in this hit, top hit, you find a quick introduction of why JavaScript object notation, JSON, is a very convenient way to interoperate with data services. And the number of variations make it even more convenient. JSONP, uh, which corresponds to JSON with padding, al allows you to define the name of the callback function. And JSON2Ps allows you to define additional uh, uh, parameters for the JSONP call, such as evaluating code with the retrieval of the JSONP data structure and code evaluated after the data structure is completely retrieved. At the very end of this document, you get a library with the functions that support the functionality described in this presentation. And in the text, you also find the description of the three functions that make this small library. So if you use this library by copying and pasting it to your JavaScript libraries or by renaming it with the .js suffix, you can uh, include them in your HTML pages by calling them from your script elements. Going back to the, this uh, small library, so it includes three functions. One of them is a, a call function that includes two input arguments, the source and next of all. Source is the URL of the S3DB deployment you're targeting, followed by some query parameters. And next of all is the code you want to evaluate with the retrieval of the data structure. Going over the contents of this function, you have a call string, so a unique string here that is obtained by concatenating call underscore and in a random number that will make it unique. Then the uh, head element is created, the script element is created, the idea of the script element is going to be this unique string. Then the source is further concatenated with additional attribute value pair parameters, one of them being format equals to JSON. This is also where you could use XML or RDF as alternatives. Then the name of the callback function is defined here, and the code to be evaluated the retrieval defined here. And finally, any code you want executed after the call is finished is included here. And you can see that this calls another function, which is included in the, in the library, remove element by ID, which as the name suggests, will remove whatever HTML element that has the ID provided as an input argument. So in this case, it's the script ID. In summary, this function will create a script that will make a JSON call and will remove the script after the call is finished. Now you'll notice that the callback function is s3db underscore JSON to piece, and this is the third function of the library here, which will uh, evaluate the data structure, which will be the first argument, and then it will evaluate the second argument. So the second argument, if it includes the ANS, which stands for answer, as a term, this will be uh, replaced by the data structure itself. So it's a very convenient way to use a functional approach to uh, making calls to S3DB deployments by including a call to the answer of the call itself. Now this is easier to understand with an, uh, with an example. So I'm going to open an HTML page that loads this library. And I'm going to open Firebug. And we are going to use the console to see this functionality in action. So I'm going to create two variables, URL, which includes the URL of the, S3, the target S3DB deployment, followed by the PHP application that exposes the API. And I encourage you to read in the wiki about this S3QL application, uh, which includes a number of attribute value pairs, which just have access key and a number of our format and so on. One of them is query. And query is 
an XML data structure that includes the parameters of the query you want to make. An example here, you have select, so you open and close the XML, and you have select name description from projects. So source equals to URL plus query, and there you are. Now let's first see how this looks like to the browser. Window open when the call is made. So because you didn't provide a format, the default tabular text format is used, and you find out that if you don't provide any authentication to so your public user, you are given access in this target deployment to, to five projects. One, two, three, four, five. Now let's provide some additional parameters. For instance, format. And now you, you get the same information as a JSON data structure, where S3D underscore JSON, the default callback function name, is used. Now you probably want to change that, or maybe not. But if you do, JSONP. Callback, you can write any, anything you want here. And now you see that the new function name is used as the callback. Now let's continue adding parameters. So another one is on load. So whatever you put here, I'm going to call it finish. You find out, you find it at the end of the script, at, at the end of, of, of the answer to the call. So whatever is provided as on load is evaluated at, after the call is finished. And of course now the most interesting one. So anything I put here is going to be used, is going to be evaluated with a call. So for instance I could say la la equals to answer. Now I'm not going to run it here, I'm just going to write some code. I want to show this, and there it is, second input argument in the callback function, because I want to show this working now with a real call to the JSONP service. Okay. So remember this. Source, which is the first input argument of the call function, source. And the second one is going to be the next eval, so the JSON PP. Remember here, JSON two P's. JSON two P's is next eval. Next eval, second input argument. Let's go back here. Call. And now I'm going to provide a very simple string, just saying that whatever the data is, I want it assigned to the variable ALA, ANS. And you notice that there was a very quick call here. I'm going to do it again so you can see it, where the mouse is now. See, very quickly. Now let's go to the DOM. And indeed, there is a new variable called LALA with the five elements in an array, including the description and the name. Now let's go back to, our, to the application I just loaded, and let's see this in action to validate a user, for example. And in this case, I'm going to retrieve some data from the Cancer Genome Atlas. And notice here I have access to one more project that is not made available to the public. And let's see the asynchronous communication with web service. I'm just clicking on a number of collections. And the icons in the collection are retrieved asynchronously. Notice how they are filled as we go. This is probably easier to see if we open firebug again, and now we inspect what's happening in the head of the document. So I'm going to click in another collection, one with many entries, clinical data, and then genomic characterization. Notice how the call is made and is removed after the call is complete. And I'm, back. I'm going to do this again. Let's see if we, this can be clearer by clicking on a number of items of one of these large collections. This is clinical data. 
and I'm going to click on these three in quick succession and notice how this, the scripts are added to the head and they are removed. One, two, three. See how they are added and re removed. Now if you're intrigued by this code, you can obtain it by going to docs.sdde.org. You put here your target S3 deployment. If you have a user key, you can put it here. Otherwise, just go as public user. And the five public projects are provided. So you can start getting the data. Notice how the code was automatically propagated to your browser and all this synchronous communication is immediately supported. Okay, hope you have fun uh, using web services with the JavaScript uh, object notation. It's a very convenient way to interoperate with S3DB.